one spot, two spot, red spot. I guess that's it. Let's get into it. Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Tonight is the last of the spots that I'll be covering, but I did want to just start off by thanking Eric for sending me this bottle. I really appreciate it. In fact, you are the reason that I went out and bought a green and a yellow. <laughs> so this whole week is devoted to Eric, so thank you very much. Um, anyway, so let's talk about this red spot. Now this hasn't really been a thing in the last 50 years. So roughly 1960s or so saw the last production of red spot. I couldn't really find the reason why, but it doesn't matter. What's important to know is that this has just started hitting the shelves again recently. And it was very hard to find for a couple of years, but just going to Total Wine or Julio's Liquors or wherever else, it's on the shelves now. You can find this if you'd like to. But let's talk about what comprises this whiskey. Now we're talking ex-bourbon barrels, we're talking Oloroso Sherry casks, and we're talking Marsala Fortified Wine casks. But the way that they make this is interesting, because this is aged 15 years. And in some cases, you would take, you know, a couple different whiskeys, you'd marry them together, and good. But you can't do that, right? That's not 15 years. You can't take two fives and make a 10 out of it. That's still a five. So what they do is they take um, these barrels from Sicily, which they acquired in, I believe, 2000. And by 2004, they had filled them up with whiskey. And they were Marsala, by, uh, Marsala wine barrels. Sorry about that. So afterwards, after the five years, they took that and they dumped it into these ex-bourbon barrels. And they aged it for another five years. And then afterwards, they put them into Olorosa sherry buds, or casks, and they aged them again for another five years. And that's what we're drinking today, around 2017. Um, there's some math in there, but one way or another, they started putting them out in 2017. So let's talk about the way that this noses and tastes. Figure I spent all week talking about the history. If you're curious, you can go back and check out some of those videos. Now the nose on this is very reminiscent of a bourbon, which is interesting because it does spend that last little bit in the sherry, but it definitely takes on some characteristics of the bourbon. So, but it also gets a little bit of the wine. What I'm trying to say here is that there is a fruitiness to this, but it's a heavier fruit. We're talking more like cherries, like black cherries. We're talking um, not quite plum, maybe more like an orange. Uh, I'm just, I'm kind of going with this as I'm thinking about it. So in a lot of bourbons, you're gonna pick up orange, right? This has some orange in it. There's cherry, which you also get a lot of bourbons, but you also get that in sherried wines. Um, so that's, I mean, sorry, sherried whiskeys. So that's not necessarily the bourbon, but there's a bit of leather in there, which again is a very bourbony kind of note. So interesting how this is playing out. Hmm. Mostly just fruits. I bet if I spent a little bit more time, I could probably pick out some, but something that's coming across to me, which doesn't happen very often at all, I think it's only happened one other time, is mango. I'm, uh, I'm getting some mango in here along with the cherries. So it's very, very cool. All right, let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. Hmm. Ooh, the finish on that is interesting. The finish there is from the Marsala, without any doubt. Um, almost no bourbon on the finish. So let's let's go through this. You've got that drying sensation that you'll of, often get with a sherried whiskey. It's uh, the tannins that you tend to get, and and some of the heavier elements that you get out of the um, out of the, the the wine casks. So where I said the the nose was all fruit, this is almost like over ripened fruit. Um, it's got the cherries, but they're very deep. They're dark and they're, they're, I don't want to say they're delicious. Honestly, they kind of flow into the next bit where it's being overpowered a little bit by that sherry. It's, this is interesting because I'm trying to decide whether I like this or not. And, and I've been trying to decide whether I like this or not actually for about a month at this point. I'm, I'm genuinely not sure. 
the the taste here, I, I guess what I'll do is I'll, I'll tell you what I'm getting and you can decide how that affects you. So if you were to have a heavily sherried scotch, um, whatever, if you were to have a heavily sherried scotch, is that a taste that you love? Is it is it the drying sensation that you get from the sherried? Is that something that you like? Or do you like a lighter sherried scotch where you end up getting um, you know, some of the fruit notes? This is definitely more towards the heavy side. There, you're not getting a whole lot of subtlety here. It's mostly just hitting you in the tongue. Um, you're getting some pepper in here as well. Uh, interesting, because because the, the way it's coating the inside of my mouth, it's it's not oily, but it's very heavy. It's got, it's almost, uh, you know what? It reminds me a little bit of the sulfury meatiness that you get in a Craig Elliki. and. Uh, that's that's interesting. I hadn't even thought of that whiskey in a lot of years, but this kind of reminds me of that. Very very strange. All right, let's try another another sip. I have a feeling that I'm getting some stuff out of here that that others might not. Um, mostly because a lot of the things I saw about this, people were just praising the fruits left and right. I'm not getting the fruits so much. I'm mostly getting just all of these characteristics that are. They're not unpleasant, but they're very different than what the nose tells you it should be. Um, if I if I think of anything else, I'll actually add it here on the on the card. I realize I've been giving you a, a whole lot of notes, and what I have here is mostly what I've described of these heavier elements. But it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. But I think the Marsala wine might be a mistake. Um, I mean, clearly not. I don't own a multi-million dollar whiskey company. They're they're doing everything right, and I'm just drinking it on camera. But my my feeling about this is that the Marsala was probably a mistake. Anyway, um, as I mentioned, this is not this hasn't really been around for about 50 years, but you can find this now. You can find it on the shelves. But the problem is, this is 130 dollars. For me personally, that's not worth it at all. Um, this is totally worth trying at a bar, just to see if you like it. But what I would recommend instead, especially now that I'm at the end of the week, just buy the, the yellow. You can even skip the green. The green is great, but if you have to get one of them, get the yellow. So anyway, this is the end of the spots. Next week, I'm gonna be covering uh, Kilbegan and uh, something else, actually. I, I know what it is, but I'm keeping it a secret. So, thank you for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. Make sure you check out thewhiskeydictionary.com so you can check out the 2020 Whiskey Challenge. And I hope to see you next week. Have a great rest of your night. Cheers.